Hello, everyone, and welcome to another national edition of the Armstrong Women Show. Let me welcome Melanie Campbell. Melanie, welcome back to the broadcast house. Oh, it's awesome to be here. This you know, now, you know, you're chairman of the Ballot Powers Action Fund. What is that? Well, it's just a, uh, a new C4 that we established because I do a lot of work around policy. Um, and so, as an organization, I've, you know, I've been leading a C3 organization, so we wanted to make sure as an organization, when we're out here doing more advocacy, that we just make sure we did it under the right umbrella. So Power to Ballot Action Fund is a new entity that we've established. Well, welcome to uh, being relevant, because I saw Fox News wrote about you and Cora Barry and uh, about things you've said in the past. We've all said things in the past. You know, politics is a vicious game. Mm -hmm. You look, look at the things that Trump has said about his opponents. Look at the thing that Biden mm -hmm. said during his days. That could be seen as racist. Yes. And the thing that happens in elections, though, mm -hmm. is that you do whatever you can. It's a battleground to win. But once you have the nominee, you unify around that candidate. Exactly. So obviously, you've been out there a long time. But that's not what people are interested in. People are not interested in what you said ten and five years ago, what people are interested in, people are really struggling. Right. Um, people are really concerned about the border. People right. think that we're on the brink of law. And as much as we try to play race and, and, and other divisive rhetoric into this, the nation wants this country to come together. Mm -hmm. Now, I know you are loyal to the vice president. There's no which is okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Everybody's loyal to so, In my personal In your capacity. personal capacity. <laughs> yes, yeah, not in okay. your professional. Right. Just like I have a friendship with former President Donald Trump right. Right. in my personal capacity. Right. But on this broadcast, I will criticize him because yes. first and foremost, I'm a journalist. Right. Okay? And you cannot compromise that. What do we do to get people to help that when they need where they are? Yeah. Well, you know, uh, I'm a Southern girl. I'm from I'm from Florida, a small place called Miramis, Florida. I know you, South Carolina. Uh, so when I go home, is when you really get. You know, I'm in Washington in this area, and you, and you can can live in a bubble. But when I go home, or when I go to to, to Georgia, I was in Macon, Georgia, a few weeks ago. Um, when you get out into the community, you know, and you li listen to folks, people are trying to make sure they can survive, right? You know, in in the small town that I'm from, where. Uh, it, when I was growing up, it was thriving because of the Cape Kennedy and a lot of jobs on the Cape and all these things. You don't have a lot of that anymore. You, the fruit, uh, the people would be able to have orange groves and all that. So it's, it is about day-to-day uh, -day living and being able not just to survive, but how do we thrive, right? And I love, and I love that about you because you bring all of that to your conversations. And I do, we haven't been in this space together in a long time, but that's what I like about what you talk about because it's okay to talk about all the things that matter to our communities. And, it, and, and one of those things is, uh, and of course, as a black woman, right, um, I have a, my perspectives on things from a different lens, uh, but, but all those lived experiences matter. And so this election is very exciting, not just because you have this uh, possibility, uh, and I'm not endorsing anybody, I'm just being factual, the, of having the first woman president in this in this nation that we've never had, right? Um, but also there's something else I think going on. And what's been interesting in the last, I guess, week and a half, two weeks since uh, President Biden stepped, a, uh, stepped aside to, to uh, won't accept the nomination, is that you got people coming up. I don't think six months ago I would have seen ability for all these Zoom calls, right, that you, you've been seeing. You have white dudes for Kamala, white women for Kamala. That's a great thing because we can talk about our, 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 what makes up uh, our differences, but we can also talk about what makes up what, what we have in common. And, and I'm glad you're bringing it up because I think what people want to know is who is the vice president when it comes to policy? Yeah. How does she differentiate herself from her boss now, yeah. Joe Biden? Will she continue the same yeah. policies? Because it's not a Republican and Democratic mm -hmm, issue. Mm -hmm. People are concerned about the open borders. Well, I think, I think, I can't speak for the vice president, but I will say, my assumption, she ran on the same ticket. She got the same 14 million votes he got, and they were running off of the, the agenda of the Biden-Harris administration. I don't foresee her changing that, really, but she will have to bring her voice to it, obviously, right? So that's what, that's what I feel. So I think on a, from a domestic standpoint, uh, some of the things that, from the African-American community, yes, people are concerned about the border. I'm not dismissing that. But I also know people are still concerned. Um, I'm one of them. 
right, about rights and freedoms. I'm worried about this democracy. I'm worried about will we have, will my great niece and nephew have a democracy uh, where their vote will, will matter, um, or their voting rights um, are, are still strong, that women, as a woman, you know, I don't need, no, I, this Melanie Campbell, I've aged out, quite honestly, right, about uh, choice. But I want to make sure my nieces and nephews. But, but, so those but, but, things but, but are also I, but, but important. But the Republican platform has evolved. Mm -hmm. Trump has made it clear he's uh, when a woman's life is in danger, incest and rape. Mm -hmm. Those are exceptions. I think the the, the, the positions are very similar. Yeah, but you know, the election is not just about. And I know we're talking about the president, and the vice president. It's also what's happening on the state okay. level. That's okay. what I wanted to kind of get to because the, the states are passing laws that are making and not every state is is equal when it comes to a woman's right to control her body and that's a concern because there's a health issue tied to that so part of it is that an a, issue tied to pregnancy control uh, her well, body well control control her body if you have something that you are your, your life is threatened as you mentioned or you may have a, a ability where you want to have you just have people talking about they don't want to have in vitro fertilization in some of these states that means I won't, if, if I have a problem, I won't be able to have a baby, right, but, but as a woman. So is, all of these things how matter. How important right? is that issue uh, in the overall of everything else that's going on to, let me, let me, let me come back to that. Let me okay, take a break. Okay. Melanie Campbell is our guest. We'll be back. I'm Armstrong Strong Okay. Okay. So, so where we're where we going? Welcome back to the broadcast. You know, you said something very important in the last segment, is that how can the vice president abandon the policies and the agenda of President Biden? She has no choice but to continue that agenda, whether it's immigration, mm -hmm. whether it's Ukraine, Russia, whether it's Israel, mm -hmm. and where they are in terms of what's going on in yeah. Gaza right now, whether it's the economy, whether well, it's the social issues, because if she doesn't, it'll backfire. But, and, this, and the Democratic Party, like the Republican Party or any other party, has what? A platform that other people weighed in on. 14 million people voted for the Biden-Harris ticket, which means they voted for what they were, what they were saying they were going to do. So uh, wherever people stand on it, I, th I think it would be. I, and I don't see her doing that. Um, but I. But and we look in 30 days, people will be voting. <laughs> right. but how, yeah, does, so. how does she bring in? We know her base is going to support her. Mm -hmm. We know Trump's base is going to support him. Mm -hmm. How do they bring in the undecided voters, the independents? Because that's what's mm -hmm. going to win this election. Yeah. Um, well, as a non independent, <laughs> right, um, I would assume that she's got to do what she's done with her base. You've got to listen, you know, listen to folks, get out there. And she seems to be running, and every time I turn around, she's somewhere, right? And I think that's part of it. You know, have those conversations. I'm, I'm, my assumption is she's doing that because listening is a, is, is a powerful thing. And I think that's part of what uh, will make for her to be even stronger candidate. And listen and find out. Uh, have those conversations. Go to those town hall meetings. Get it, it, it's a it's going to be uh, an election that is definitely going to be about turnout, right? But I also think it's going to be. I think policy matters. Mm -hmm. I think at some point you've got to speak to the policy. Mm -hmm. What does she say when? People are saying, what happens if she has, if there's a possibility that if China attacks Taiwan, will, will she go to war if China attacks Taiwan? What, would you go to war with Russia if it attacked North Macedonia? Mm -hmm. uh, what is it that if, if, if Netanyahu decides that this, he wants to expand even more? on his mm -hmm. war in the Middle East. Yeah. How does she stand up? What experience does she have that give people comfort right. that she is ready to stand in the gap on those important issues? She's been vice president for three and a half years. She's been in those same rooms with the, with the, with the current president. She's been a U.S. senator, right? She's been, she has 
It's not like she started from just coming from California and she hasn't actually been in those rooms. But what was she doing right? in that room? Right. Well, I, honestly, I'm going to tell you, I can't speak to what, but I, what I can say from looking out, from looking in, because international, you know, uh, foreign policy is not my expertise, but I would say as a, as a voter, right, as someone who I would be concerned, I, I'm good at, I know you have been in those rooms, and so you, you, you're not going to start from scratch. You actually have been in where those decisions have been made as the vice president, and your role as the vice president is to be what? Ready if something happens to the president. So my assumption is you've been in those rooms, I'm confident that you would make the right decision. I don't foresee, because uh, President Biden never came across as a person who was a war ready, ready for to go, go uh, shoot up any place and start a war. So I'm assuming you're somewhere in, the, in that space as well. Listen, I understand this excitement over her possibly being the first woman president. I understand the mm -hmm. history of American blacks in this country when you come out of slavery, they jury segregation, the mm -hmm. civil rights movement, mm -hmm. and how the system crippled the progress. And they have, the same with former President Barack yeah. Obama, mm -hmm. the thrill. But at some point, beyond her being a woman, and just happened to be somebody of color, that is not enough to, to get her elected across the board. There's got to be much more. What else is it that she needs to convince the American people that I am ready for to be your 40 right. Seven of the United States. I think she's doing it. What is right? she doing? I think she's doing it because she's she's out there in the community. She's talking about the platform. She's they and they have a record to run on. They haven't done everything for me. What the black women say they want, right? What do we say? What do we say we wanted, right? We 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 want to make sure that you deal with uh, the unemployment rate. We wanted to make sure, this is like four years ago, the things that were concerned. Most of them were still mostly with bread and butter issues. Why did black women vote for the Biden-Harris ticket four years ago? A lot of those things have been addressed. What hasn't been addressed in 2024 is that we're concerned about inflation and making sure that uh, my, my paycheck can ex extend uh, all the bills that I have in a month. Those are the kind of things that she should talk about in her, now that she's in this role, you mentioned uh, how she's going to address those things and, and deal with what people's concern. Most people that I talk to when I go home, it is about those bread and butter it issues. Is a, but you mentioned inflation. Mm -hmm. Does forgiving student loan debt, doesn't that impact inflation? Well, what it does is for someone who had to pay 20 years of student loan debt, and most of that was interest, is that it allows for me to take that paycheck and then I can do something. I can buy a home. I can buy a car. I can invest. Uh, in the stock market, if I have access, so then when you talk about the economy and being able to, so that you, most people, many people are saddled with debt. I have a brother, 68 year old brother, who long time ago been out of out of college, was still paying, and he's retired. He was still paying interest on loans because he didn't make the kind of money that he could pay it off. But should so, that be the so, role so, of the government to forgive well, that debt? Well, well, why not? Why not? Because if the role of the government is to also try to find a way, if, if we're going to say the government has a responsibility to make sure inflation is down, to make sure that the unemployment this, is down, this, this also will contribute to open, inflation. But also opportunity and it shifts, right? If I'm putting, if I'm able to take my take my money and do what I need to do with it, as opposed to just paying on a student loan, I'm also in, in, contributing to the economy. So I, you know, I'm not a, again, I'm not a, I'm not an uh, economist. But I, but I know what happens and what's happening in my own family where people are getting uh, a relief of that debt and they're able to take so care of very their day-to-day. -day. Day. I can see it in my own family. They're able to take care of that day-to-day -day need. My brother is retired. He was never going to pay. He still had a little bit left, and they did. Uh, he worked in the school system. He wasn't a teacher, but he was a you know, teaching aide for years, right? But he still was left with that debt. And so that little bit of relief helps that senior citizen who's worked their entire life giving to community just gave a little break. Hold that. Melanie Campbell is our guest. I'm Armstrong Williams, and we'll be back. It is easier to build up strong children than to try and repair broken men. The streets are plagued with crime, violence, there's a lot of poverty, and it's all a result of lack of education that's happening in our schools. So it really is a crisis. We come from very different political perspectives, but we've come to the same conclusion. 
and that is there is a crisis in the classroom. Children are being deprived of quality of life because they're being deprived of a good education. We must solve this problem. It's incumbent upon all of us to join hands together to get this done. We can't afford to wait one more day before we address these issues because every day we lose another child. Let's stop the politicking. Let's stop the games. Let's really do something to give these kids a real chance at life and being a part of that American dream. We need accountability for funding. Uh, many of the districts where you're seeing very low test scores, um, you know, students graduating with very low literacy and math comprehension rates, they are receiving a lot of funding. So where is the money going where our kids aren't being adequately educated? If you believe every child is deserving of a quality education, please go to educationjusticefoundation.com. And welcome back. What is it that we can learn from former presidential campaign, uh, candidate Hillary Clinton running for president versus uh, Vice President Harris? Because remember, mm -hmm. she was up over 40 percentage points over Trump early on. He had the same enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. What is different about this election versus what we've learned um, from the past? I would say don't let off the gas and don't listen to the polls. Interesting. <laughs> right? Don't listen okay. to the polls. Listen to run. Don't, don't slow down. Don't take any state for granted. Red, blue, purple. Because um, there's more on the ballot besides the president and vice president. You know, you have governor's races. You have state legislative races. And one of the things that, you know, I'm paying attention to is like those, those races where it's closer to, closer to home. But I think that's the main thing. You know, don't just do the battleground states. I would suggest get into, you know, time is, is, is finite, but get into some of, the, some, of the, some of the other states and make sure that you don't just go with what, what the Yeah, because the she also raised unprecedented. Just do battleground. She also raised unprecedented amounts, amounts of, money. of money. Right, yeah, right. But it right. didn't matter. And, and people were shocked that she lost. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I, the, the, the year that Hillary Clinton lost, uh, I was in Florida because my mother. Uh, passed in uh, June 15, uh, 2016. And so I was in Florida unexpectedly. She had a stroke, passed away four days later, 87 years young. Um, but I remember that in Florida, uh, just observing, because I was dealing with family, just observing that, you know, that you didn't see enough. And, I, and I, where I'm from is like what we call the Eiffel Corridor, they talk about Florida, mm -hmm. or, you know, uh, Brevard County. With Harry Harry T. Moore right. country, where mm -hmm. they were, that's my hometown, mm -hmm. Nims, Florida, right? So I remember that, and I didn't see enough. Just me observing. So you saw the signs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And you, and you're right. And then mm -hmm. what about the things that I didn't just, see signs that she was going to lose? I mean, I saw the signs she might lose Florida. Yeah. Florida, but yeah. talk about what we, mm -hmm. the elephant in the room. This is an unprecedented year, an election, Biden's debacle in the Bay, Biden withdrawing from running for president, Trump almost assassinated, things that we've never, that just have changed the dynamics of these elections. Mm -hmm. Because we think we know everything and we're experts, but there are things that are happening now that we've never seen before. Exactly. That makes yeah. us want to pause. Well, you know, um, as I say, God, I always still believe whatever, whatever we think we're in control, we're really not. God is still in control and things are moving in all kinds of directions. Um, I tell folks to stay prayed up because this has been so much going on um, in this country and the, and the amount of hate and division, right, that I'm hoping somewhere along the way that, 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 that can be broken. And I'm not talking partisan. I'm just talking about the level of, of angst. Like when I go home where, uh, where I didn't see Confederate flags, I see Confederate flags, I see, I see things that are just a little different than they were, and over the years, um, and that somehow I'm hoping that in this moment, what's been fun, and I'm not doing fault partisan, can I just talk about what I see? When I, when I see what happened after, and I want to lift up President Biden, because giving up power is not easy. No, it's not. Right? You won the, you won the primary, 
right? Yes. On a personal level, I was one of those saying, hey, get, I don't believe in tearing down our elders. So I come from a different cloth, right? Let, you know, it's a way to do anything. I think that wasn't done so well. But at the end of the day, I think the man prayed about it, talked to his family, and made a decision that was best for him. But it was something different that happened. Um, I'm strong. I was in Florida with my brother, right? Same brother I was talking about. Uh, and when he made the decision, and that, and everybody saw it on their phones, and everybody's looking. Oh my God! Here's this letter. He's he's stepping out. You know, he's he's not going to accept the nomination. And and then a few, and then it was like, oh my gosh, what does this mean? And then a few minutes later, literally, my phone just lit up. Something different happened. Now, how it plays out, what's different to me about President Obama's time, which was definitely, you know, that hope and change, is it feels like people are feeling hopeful. Now, depending on which aisle you're on, you may think think differently, but around the people, the black people, the black women, the young people that I'm around, there's a sense of energy that ha was not there. And it's a generational shift. Whatever happens, it's, it's a yes, generational hold, shift. Hold that point. We're going to come back with some fire on the comments with... Uh, our guest, Melanie Campbell. I'm Armstrong Williams. As a home buyer, you need a lender who cares about your home ownership dreams. United Security Financial has been helping families secure their dream homes for 30 years. We're a national fair practice lender that provides affordable mortgages and low down payment programs to eligible home buyers. To learn how United Security Financial can help you secure your dream home, call 1-800-373-4186. Why do you think <laughs> Donald Trump is so effective? Why do I think Donald Trump is so effective? With his, with his base. He's consistent. True. It's always the same. On a personal level, I don't like it. I, don't, I get that, but he's always the same. He's consistent. You know what you're getting. You know, it's, it's consistent. There's no surprise. Yeah. Even at NABJ, nothing he said or did surprise you. No. No. And that's why I don't understand. But that's what people, he fr he's scares people. Because uh, you don't, a lot of people don't believe he respects the rule of law and the transition of power. I agree with that. Yeah, <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I mean, I agree with that. Um, um, and you, especially if you know what's happening, you know, and uh, you know, we talk about misinformation, disinformation, people telling lies. I've heard you just call it what it is. I, I think that um, you know, we, I think what's happening now, though, is that people are uh, the level of energy. Yes, it's, uh, there's energy on both sides, on but both on sides. this side of the aisle, when you talk about what happened from from the Democrat side, it, it, it's 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 how important uh, is it's the debate? It's, how, how, it's, it's how, something that that's not just. Uh, I, I I don't think that energy is going to go away. No, it's not. How important mm. is the debate? The debate that Trump President and Biden, Harris. Oh, President. Oh, I, I would love to see it. If, I would love to. See, I don't like the fact that people don't want a debate. So I think that should be a debate. Yeah. I think she would be. Uh, she's a former prosecutor, so I think she would be uh, formidable, to yes. say the least. She was formidable when she was in the debate Against in Biden. Miami. Against right? Biden. Right. Let's not forget that. Yeah. But listen, it's a pleasure. How can we find out more information about um, the Ballot Power yeah. Action Fund? Yeah. Power the Ballot Action Fund. Just uh, uh, just, just uh, go to, to to our site. Uh, we're, we're brand pretty pretty brand new because we. Like I said, we set it up because we do so much advocacy now. Um, and then just follow us. Um, hear more about us. You'll hear much more about us uh, uh, in 2025. Well, than just remember this. If they're not attacking you, you're not doing anything. And so, then there's that. And so. thank you so much uh, for the opportunity. And so we're together for a reason. Because, yeah. you know, we Southern folks. So we know how to say, say thank you. But we also know how to fight, too. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. I appreciate having you. Thank you. I'm Armstrong Williams. Thank you for joining us.